on everyone so by now i'm sure most if not all of you are aware that jared vanderbilt is out for weeks we don't know exactly how long uh, he's gonna go through further testing uh, but gotta imagine it's gonna be at least a month if not longer hopefully he's back in time for that march grind because that month of march is brutal for the lakers but the lakers are in trouble and it's a problem right because we're already just been terrible defensively we're really good against the boss celtics even when jared vanderbilt left but still right for the most part, we have been sinking on the defense side of things faster than the Titanic. And it's just, it's not good, right? Um, we are now the 15th best defensive rating in the league. We were, you know, a month ago, a couple weeks ago, even, in the top 10, looking like we were heading to the top five minimum. And boom, it's just like through injuries and just lack of performances and just intensity and effort, the Lakers have really struggled on that side. Cam Reddish is out, right? Cam Reddish has done an excellent job. I know some people are kind of hot and cold on Cam Reddish, but he is a vet minimum guy who has far outseeded his his vet minimum contract. And I like Cam Reddish a lot. Uh, He's still 24 years old, a lot of upside, a lot of potential. His three ball was starting to fall a little bit uh, before he ended up going out. And we don't know how long it's going to be before he's out. And it's crazy because the Lakers are now in a position where they need wing depth, like desperately. We need some, some level of perimeter defense. It wasn't really a thought going into the season. It was like, oh, man, Rui, LeBron, Jared Vanderbilt, right? Cam Reddish, uh, Christian Wood, Torian Prince, right? And luckily, we have the savior and Darvin Ham's baby daddy in Torian Prince. Woo! Luckily, Torian Prince will get to play 40 minutes a game now because, look, the Lakers would be cooked if it wasn't for that. But in all seriousness, look, I like Torian Prince. I think Torian Prince has been excellent for the Lakers this year. I know a lot of people feel otherwise, but I don't think it has anything to do with his play or what it is. I think it's just he's playing 35 minutes a game, right? And that's not the role he's supposed to be playing. I think for what he provides for 15 minutes a game is incredible. I mean, the dude's nearly a lock for three or four threes a game. The guy's been our best three-point shooter all season, so consistent in that regard. He's had his bad games here and there, and people hold the the bad games to him more than, like, the stretch. I mean, he had, like, a month and a half stretch where he was averaging, like, four made threes a game. Like, the guy's done more than enough for his $5 million contract. But again, so many people are down on Torian Prince and are sick of Torian Prince because instead of him being that rotation piece that's supposed to play, you know, 15 minutes a game, he's playing three times that amount. And it's just like, all right, like we just, we need upgrades in that regard. And look, Torian Prince, he tries, I I, I like his veteranness. I, he does make some of like the, the key plays. He's he's made plays that have like single-handedly won us games, right? Um, was it the, the in-season tournament, like the knockout round where we played the Suns is one that really stands out to me, right? The ball is trailing, going out of bounds near half court. And Torian Prince is the only guy that tracks that down, goes over there, picks the ball up and heads the other way while... Kevin Durant, everyone's just, like, they're literally right there. They could just pick the ball up. But they thought, like, oh, everyone's letting it go out of bounds. Boom, Torian Prince comes in, swoops in, goes to the other end, gets a bucket, it seals the game, right? Like, he, he's great in those moments. And I, and I understand Darvin Ham trusts him and his veteranness, which is fine. You know, at the end of the game, if you need a shot or something, or, you know, you, you take out uh, that, you know, last – shot or whatever you throw him in for the three or you you need a defense to stop it it's like okay well it's either him or austin reeves sure he has a little more size a little more savvy a little more understanding he's not going to fall for the pump fakes as much i don't mind that darvin ham loves toria prince he's a glue guy that is very important in championship teams but relying on him 40 minutes a game is not going to get it done And the Lakers desperately need some help. Now, this is an opportunity for many other guys. Uh, I would imagine that Rui gets more opportunity. Problem is, is Rui really struggles defending the quicker, twitchier perimeter guys. So, you may have to have LeBron play the three. And that's not great. And LeBron, at this stage of his career, is kind of the last thing you want is him chasing around all these younger, twitchier wings. But he's the only real guy that we have that can do it and lock him down and do it efficiently. He's holding, like, opponents to 40% or whatever from from the field when he's, like, actually engaged on the defensive side. Problem is, is LeBron would have to be engaged, right? One of the reasons he likes to play the four is because he doesn't have to be 
just locked down defensively for 35 minutes that he's in the game, right? And I'm not saying you can't play him at the four in, spot, in spots, but like to start games or whatever, which, all right, maybe not start games because we know Darvin Ham's going to go with the same starting lineup with Torian Prince. Torian Prince is going to start. But beyond that, in that Jared Vanderbilt role, in that Cam Reddish role, you're probably going to have to go with Rui Hachimura, maybe just kind of swarm them with size, right? Have like Rui, AD, and, and Christian Wood get some more looks like that. Or when AD's out, have Jackson Hayes go Hayes, Wood, Rui. Just kind of o- try to overwhelm teams with your size. This is good opportunity for Max Christie to get more growth, more opportunity. Um, look, I love Max Christie, but he's a 20-year-old second-year player. Right, he makes a lot of mistakes. He gets beat a lot of assignments. He's not like the most disciplined. He's excellent perimeter defender. Don't get me wrong. And he he's probably going to be elite at some point, like an elite two way player because he has the skills. Right, he might be like just raw. Might be our second best perimeter defender behind Jared Vanderbilt. The problem is he just doesn't have the discipline yet that Jared Vanderbilt has, which is fine. Again. Max Christie, you could hide in a lab for four years and he'd still be younger than Jared Vanderbilt. So I like Max Christie. He's probably going to get more opportunity, more shine, more role here. But, no, I don't really think he's the answer. Gabe Vincent, if he ever comes back, right? Now, again, he's not a perimeter defender or a, a, a wing defender, but he is a perimeter defender. He is a guy that could be a point of attack that could help. Um, obviously, you don't want him defending you know, like a Kevin Durant or something like that. But um, it just, it would be nice to have just even a, a defensive guard. I'll, I'll bet that undersized, I still think that he would help tremendously. But the Lakers really got to get a trade done. And you got to, you got to get, you got to get guys that are more, ideally three and D, but got to get some more size out on the perimeter. Now, obviously, DeJounte Murray seems to be the target, seems to be the most likely. The Lakers are really active in trying to acquire DeJounte Murray. Now, I will say DeJounte Murray would help tremendously in that regard. Um, Because, look, DeJounte Murray is 6'5", hyper-athletic, point-of-attack guy. He also has, like, a 6'10 wingspan. So he's got good size, good length. He can defend threes, um, even in some circumstances, probably defend fours. Uh, It's not something that I'd want him doing regularly, but... In a pinch, in a moment, right? You're playing a certain team, and it's like, ah, like, we're, we don't have Reddish. We don't have Jared Vanderbilt. It's like, who else do we put on this guy, right? Like, even like a Kevin Durant. It's like, would you rather have Torrey and Prince on him, or would you rather have, you know, uh, 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 DeJounte Murray, who at least has the, the quickness, the foot speed, the athleticism to kind of try to make things difficult, be a little physical with him. He's not, like, a physically imposing guard, which... Um, you know, like, think of, like, a Bruce Brown, right? Bruce Brown is more, you know, he's more physically imposing. He likes to he likes to bang a little bit, likes to get into your chest a little bit. DeJounte Murray, he's not that level. Um, but he was an all-defensive guard, and he does have that defense. And I do think if you got a guy like a DeJounte Murray, that would help a lot because you'd have that first line of defense, right? You'd have that guy that, like, okay, we're playing – Whatever, we're playing uh, uh, Denver, right? It's like, okay, well, your assignment, Murray, is Murray, right? If you're defending Jamal Murray, get on him, get into his chest, get after him, be resilient, you know, and, and just help defend out on the perimeter, use your size, your length, your foot speed. I do think that that helps. But you still need, in my opinion, other, gar- uh, other wings, which I think the Lakers need regardless, right? Like, I love Jared Vanderbilt, what he does. Right, but if you could get a legit like three and D, like Caruso would be my favorite choice. I just don't think that that's going to be realistic for the Lakers. Even if Caruso does get traded, the Lakers just don't have enough assets to to get it done. Right now, if Caruso goes for like, you know, a, a rookie <laughs> or something like that, or just salary, then I'm going to be upset. Or if he goes for like two seconds, then I'll be upset. But if he goes for like a first or something, then it's like okay. We knew that he wasn't going to be able to come. Um, But really, I mean, to me, it boils down like you got to go. You got to hit up the Nets. You got to get Royce O'Neal. You got to get Dorian Finney-Smith. And look, I know somebody is going to be in the comments and be like, the the Nets turned down two first-round picks for Dorian Finney-Smith. One, how true is that? 
report, right? Um, we heard we've heard reports before. I mean, look at Toronto, right? That they turned down uh, four firsts for OG on Anubi, and that was just the starting point. That wasn't counting like the players and all that stuff. And he didn't go for that, <laughs> right? But in Toronto's defense. They actually wanted players. So that could be what Brooklyn's looking at, right? Like, we don't want to tank. We don't want to trade Dorian Finney-Smith. Like, yeah, the two firsts would be great, but we don't want to trade him for two firsts and then get some, like, salary filler or something like that. And it also depends on what the firsts were, right? If they were, like, terrible firsts or firsts that just, like, you know, it's, like, borderline seconds or something, maybe they turn around. There's a lot of factors that could go into that, right? And, and look, there's a lot of talks about the Nets potentially being... Uh, the team that gets in bed with the the Hawks and the Lakers. So maybe maybe the Nets are having conversations with the Lakers about Dorian Finney-Smith, and that's one of the reasons they turned it down, because they're like, hey, we may be able to get D'Lo and Rui and, and, get rid of, and get rid of Spencer Dinwiddie and, you know, trade Dorian Finney-Smith, right? So instead of picks, we actually get players that are proven that can help and impact this roster, right? That could be something also, something to keep in mind. So just because you heard some report, again, reports are on all the time, right? There was the reports about LeBron being traded, right? And that was a guy that was very credible, very credible. And then guess what? Uh, Rich Paul came out today and said, nah, that, like, that ain't happening, like, right? So again, just because you hear a report doesn't mean it's true. Like I always say, take everything with a grain of salt. Don't ever just initially believe something just because you heard a report, no matter who it is. I mean, Woj has been wrong before. Shams has been wrong before. A lot of these guys are wrong, right? They're they're just going off of information that they were told, whether it's right or wrong, they don't really know. They're just going off of it, right? So things to keep in mind. But point is, we need to get somebody, Royce O'Neal, Dorian Finney-Smith, whomever, right? I ideally would love Dorian Finney-Smith because, look, if Jared Vanderbilt comes back, you could actually go with Jared Vanderbilt. I mean, a starting five of DeJounte Murray, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, Jared Vanderbilt, uh, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis would be tough. Defensively, switchability, you'd have shooting, you'd have everything. Jared Vanderbilt. I mean, Dorian Finney-Smith is like one of the premier 3 and D guys in this league. And he would have to defend like the second or third best player. That's really good, <laughs> right? And now he doesn't have to, because usually he's the guy that's defending like the first best player or the second best player, right? Well, now it's like, well, we have Vando who's going to defend the best player. Jante Murray's going to defend the best guard. So you're defending the best, the, the third or fourth best player, right? Like, boom, there you go, right? <laughs> and, and, and that is massive, right? Same thing with Royce O'Neal. Right, he's a guy that's usually defending the, you know, second, first, second, third best player. Now it's like, well, you'd get to defend the third, second, fourth best player, or third, fourth, fifth best player, right? Like that's good. It's good for the Lakers. Uh, ideally, I'd love to get both of them, right? Because I mean, you could literally just go trade for Dejounte Murray, get Dorian Finney-Smith and Royce O'Neal, and plug those three in with LeBron and AD, and literally have a starting five of like Dejounte Murray, Royce O'Neal. Dorian Finney-Smith, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. Boom, you got two guys shooting 40% from three that are excellent defensive players. DeJounte Murray has drive and kick. He could kind of be DeJounte Murray, be the point guard. You got guys playing alongside LeBron. It'd be in good shape, right? But the Lakers need to get something like that. And look, I trust Rob Palenka. Rob Palenka, if if a deal's there, he's going to find it. He's done an excellent job of turning things around and turning things around quickly and finding those pieces in those players, right? He's good at staying patient, staying focused, letting things unfold, right? Getting through all the mess of like, we want three firsts for this guy. And it's like, well, and then when all is said and done, they settled for like one second. And it's like, oh, I thought I thought you wanted three firsts, right? Well, things change, right? So I trust that Rob Polinka is, is going to do his due diligence. He's going to be patient. He's going to take his time. He's not going to let anything get too far ahead of him. And he's going to end up getting the getting the proper deal done. And that's all we could ask for, right? Just get the proper deal done. Um, but anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Um, who is there anybody that jumps to mind immediately? Uh, I mean, look, even if we just got DeJounte Murray, I do think that that would help tremendously. Right, it, it absolutely would because you get a guy that uh, basically is a all defensive point of attack athletic guard who has good length, good size. But still, I'd kind of you know I, I want some 
perimeter defenders. I want some like true size rather than like a, a guard who, yeah, he's six five, but no, he's not six seven, six eight, something like that. But anyway, again, I feel what your thoughts are. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me to enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Now, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. 